Welcome to today's Zeek webinar series. Today we have Robin Summer, who's going to present on Zeek 4.0 and beyond. Uh, Robin, if you'll take just a moment to introduce yourself and the materials and then take it away. The floor is yours. Great. Thanks, Amber. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, to yeah, this presentation about the recent uh, release that we just put out. So um, for those who don't know me, I'm I'm Robin Sommer. I've been leading uh, the technical side of the Zeek team for quite a while. Um, I guess I got involved with the project in uh, 2002, 2003 ish, actually, um, back in, in Berkeley at that point at the International Computer Science Institute. Um, actually, I joined that a bit later. Originally, that was in, in, in Munich. Um, and I'm now at Colight, uh, one of the founders and the, and the CTO, and I'm leading the open source team um, at Colight. Um, so the idea for this talk is that um, I just basically taking the occasion of our recent release, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what's, what's new in there and also what's on the roadmap going forward. And um, I figured I, um, I I don't have many slides prepared. Basically, I'm just using have some keywords on here, um, so I'll do this pretty informally. Uh, feel free to put uh, any questions into the chat, which I'll try to to monitor. Um, um, there's some. Uh, can can people hear me? Okay, I see some questions about sound. I guess so, unless I hear more. Um, so yeah, so feel free to to ask questions um, and chime in. Um, my screen sharing is set up is a little bit odd here. So in case you see me like looking down and that's, I'm trying to, to see the chat. So the 4.0 release uh, of Seek just came out. Uh, took us a little bit longer than originally anticipated. Um, we went through three release candidates. Actually, I'm gonna talk about a bit, that a bit more later. Um, but at this point, um, it's on the website, it's, it's, it's ready for download and um, it's really, um, a major milestone in the sense that is um, our new long-term supported release um, that we will be uh, providing support for for the coming year. Um, and I just wanted to start actually with a little bit, a few words on, on this release cadence that um, we have established over um, the last, well, one, two years, I would say. Um, and which I believe is working pretty well at this point. So what we do is um, we put out these, these LTS releases about once a year. Um, so the last one was 3.0, was also the first LTS release. Now we have 4.0. And the idea is that um, th these are releases for people who um, want a stable version that they can rely on for a while. Um, so that means we anticipate that people will, for example, have been on 3.0 and now upgrading to 4.0. So we are, we are striving to retain backwards compatibility between those two as good as we can in the sense that we won't just take stuff out. Um, if we can avoid it, we will kind of deprecate old functionality and, and something that is impacting or maybe impacting um, configurations out there. Um, and, and then um, only release it with the next um, um, LTS release. So in between these long-term support releases, we do about every four months a feature release that are the dot releases. So the next one would be 4.1 for um, uh, the three series, we have 3.1 and 3.2. And, and these are releases that, that move more quickly, um, but we still consider them stable. So, so it's, it's, it's fine to use them operationally um, you just might have to kind of adapt your configuration a bit more quickly, particularly if stuff gets deprecated. So, but but it's like essentially after a year, the the most recent or the next the the feature release turns into the LTS release and it becomes the new um, long term supported one. In between, we do uh, security bug fixes for for both of these, um, always for the most recent one. Um, in addition, right now we have a couple months there where we are still um, supporting 3.0 as well, so just to give people a bit of uh, more headroom for upgrading. Um, and usually before we do releases, we do release candidates, and this is um, what we had just done three times for 4.0, a bit more than anticipated. Um, and the, the bottom line is here, and I'll talk about that later a bit more, we, we really need help testing these release candidates. So if anybody's up for that in the future, that would be much appreciated. Um, so 
let's look about what is new in 4.0. And, and also I wanna go back a little bit to, to 3.1 and 3.2 because for people who are still on 3.0 at, uh, at the point four came out, um, this will be new as well. So I'm just going through these, um, these, these uh, points here um, a little bit to give, give you guys a flavor of what's going on. So maybe the biggest uh, new piece in 4.0 and in, in comp comparison to 3.2 is um, that we introduced the concept of packet analyzers, which um, is our first step towards making the, the pipeline that a packet takes inside Seek more flexible um, than it used to be in the sense that um, you can now plug in a layer two analyzers uh, through a new plugin API that we added. Um, essentially in the past, um, the everything um, below and including TCP UDP. So the whole IP TCP UDP stack and the link layer analyzers, um, the VLANs and, and the various encapsulations were all hard coded in Zeek. So, so with 4.0, we changed um, the layer two to be pluggable and no longer hard coded and, and added that new um, plugin API for that. Um, this is the first step to actually uh, what's now on the roadmap to also make IP and TCP UDP uh, pluggable, so to speak, in the sense that it, um, in the future, Zeek at some point um, will be able to analyze traffic that is not IP based. Um, so this um, is, is a pretty large architectural change internally or extension, I would say. Um, it's not that visible necessarily from a user perspective, which I guess <laughs> is a good thing. But if you have new um, protocols at that layer, you can now write a plugin externally without having to modify the Zeek code. Um, another change in 4.0 is that we um, have started integrating our package manager, ZKG, into the distribution. So if you install uh, Zeek 4.0, it will come with the package manager. And the, the conceptual change is there that the package manager will now uh, locate its state actually with Zeek itself by default, rather than putting it into the user's home directory. Um, so that way it's, it's attached to Zeek, uh, which um, often makes more sense than, than attached to the user. Um, in particular, if you upgrade versions, um, that, that will be smoother. There is um, actually a blog posting coming up by Christian Kreivik um, describing this, this change in more detail. Internally, 4.0 um, comes with a new dictionary implementation, which was a, a contribution we, we got earlier on, or actually um, even um, during one of the earlier development cycles already, took a bit to kind of really get it in and, and, and shepherd it all the way for, um, for, for being able to provide our new dictionary implementation um, and internally. And this is improving performance quite a bit. Um, also under the hood, we are, um, have a lot, and this is really a theme for the whole um, 3.x um, release cycle towards 4.0. We have modernized the C++ code quite a bit. Um, to the degree that if uh, any of you has looked at older versions of Seek at, at the code, um, you will be surprised, I would say, that that how some of the stuff looks like. So we introduced it smart pointers. Um, uh, for those familiar with C++, um, this, this some, a lot of the code was still from, well, Bern wrote the first line of code in 1995. Um, so you can imagine how some of the memory management was looking there. Um, so the smart point is really helping with that. And, and also we are moving into a, um, a namespacing model where it's pretty clear what is what is externally um, uh, or what should be accessed by external plugins in particular and, and what is really considered internal. Um, Back to the user perspective, we uh, established a new support policy for um, the, 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 the platforms that we uh, test in CI and that we provide uh, binary releases for. Um, and that is, comes, um, comes actually out of this, this code modernization angle originally. So, so at some point we are now using C++ 17 um, for the code. So we at some point said, well, um, any platform that supports C++ 17 is now supported or vice versa platforms that don't support it are not supported anymore. Turns out it's not that easy because C++ 17 is really just one piece to a larger puzzle of, of dependencies. And for example, the, the standard library needs to be the right version as well. And, and it's pretty complex. So we, we switched to a different model where we, we, we pick a bunch of platforms and say everything that compiles on these, um, this is what the code can do. Basically, this is how modern the code can get to make use of that. And, and um, generally, we take the, the major um, distributions operating systems, so as, as always Linux, uh, Mac OS, and FreeBSD, and then um, 
as a rule of thumb, support the most recent two two most recent um, releases there, uh, biased towards LTS releases. You can see that in CI, um, and we are testing those. And essentially, whatever compiles on those, roughly speaking, um, is essentially fair game for our developers to um, exploit in terms of what they offer for compiler and libraries. Um, and then um, Richard actually talked about that recently, so I'm not going into detail. Um, along with the 4.0 release came the um, overhaul of the documentation that was he, he was spearheading and, and where he really, um, Richard added lots of new content there. He managed a team of, 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 of volunteers that worked across like um, the, the documentation and this has turned out really nice and, and, and really well. Um, so and it's out there as well. And it has the, the code name, the Book of Seek, and um, there's more coming in that, in that space. Um, going back a little bit to uh, 3.1 and 3.2, so the two previous feature releases since the last 3.0 uh, LTS release um, worked also on internals quite a bit. So there was a lot of more code modernization going on. In particular, one functional component uh, got essentially rewritten, and that is the, the core IO loop. Uh, that is the part of the code where every single packet goes through. Um, and th that th the old code um, there had one specific um, property, which I'm sure many of you have noticed. Um, so <laughs> there was the, the somewhat paradox situation that if you put in the, in, in the past, if you put Zeek on a network link, which has almost no traffic, it was uh, still using a lot of CPU. So it would, I don't know, hover around like like 20% of CPU, even with no packets on the wire. Um, so there was a, like, a, like a shortcoming of that old code. Um, we swapped that out and um, you know, it's libkq based. It's using like the generally through libkq, the, the various um, event-based um, APIs that, that pretty much any op operating system offers these days for uh, dispatching packet input much more efficiently uh, in terms of resources, but also in, in terms of what load it can handle. So, so there's a lot of modernization going on there. More from a user perspective, um, we added um, a nice feature that is providing distributed, distributed and persistent state to Zeek scripts. And the way we do that, you can essentially, we already had the broker tables where you can it's like, like, a, like a distributed key value store, which so far you had to use with like, like broker functions essentially in a script. And you can now tie a script level table to one of these broker um, 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 back to, or to, to, to a broker uh, table. So that transparently every time you insert something into a script table, uh, it gets propagated to all the other Zeeks that might be subscribed to that table. So in a cluster, that could be all the other worker nodes and the manager and the logger. Um, so this um, gives you a nice way of sharing state. And um, because the broker can write these, these tables to disk, uh, it gives you persistence as well. We also introduced um, what, what I would, what, what I like to call a first generation of, of a supervisor framework, which which uh, has the goal to eventually change how Zeek gets deployed on a system. So right now, we are using uh, Zeek Control as our management framework, which essentially um, is in charge of running these various processes. Right. So so you put like a configuration file in there, and it spawns up the processes like the, the workers, the logger, the manager, um, and then it's in charge of keeping them running, and it does that weirdly by uh, <laughs> uh, putting in cron uh, jobs that every five minutes or so check if these processes are still running. So it's 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 C-Control being in charge of that. So the we, we, we have started to add an API to Zeek itself that flips that around and, and allows Zeek to spawn these nodes. So a Zeek can spawn a new worker Zeek and a Zeek can spawn a new manager Zeek. So in that sense, um, Zeek becomes a supervisor of its own processes. So right now this, this the API is pretty pretty bare bones. Um, you can actually set up a cluster that way. Um, there's an example in the in the manual, um, but it's it's not very flexible. So you have to write script code, you have to hard code it. It's probably not anything that, that many people would do at this point, but I'll, I'll get to that later again. Um, it's actually something that uh, we will build on. So then again, basically the code modernization was already going on in this phase. By the way, this code modernization means for people who, who maintain plugins that you will probably have to update your code. It's not 
difficult, but it can be a little bit annoying. Well, really, a lot of stuff changed about the, the namespacing. Um, we put in a lot of deprecation warnings into the C++ API. So, so usually it will point you, the compiler will pretty much point you directly to what you need to change. So in the end, it's, it's, it's not that, that cumbersome, but we're happy to help. So if there are any questions coming up for people maintaining plugins, um, just go to Slack and, 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 and ask, and I'm sure people will chime in. Um, so in some sense, these are the, the, like the big ticket items, um, with some of them really being under the hood and then being like, like causing quite a bit of churn there. Um, but what, what actually was, was I find personally pretty striking about this whole year of development is that there it's, it's tons of like smaller changes, um, that, um, covers, uh, uh impacts, um, like the, uh, the analyzers, the logs got extended, various, um, extensions to scripting language, the infrastructure performance, um, all of that got lots of improvements and if you a little while ago i did a bit of statistics and and i saw that since 3.0 and before 4.0 came out we merged more than 400 development branches so that's essentially pull requests um and and they were spending more than 2200 uh commits and this is just the main zeek repository it's not even counting broker it's not even counting um um, um the package manager or like the surrounding ecosystem. We also put an effort actually on closing out old tickets, old in the sense that they were open already before the 3.1 st um, work started. We closed more than, than 50 of, of those, um, which basically halved the number of open tickets we have on the, on the Git issue tracker. And some of them are already old and we either actually got the stuff fixed or sometimes it just didn't, didn't apply anymore. So there's lots of work going on there. Um, that that is, is is really good to see, in particular because this code base just has um, some some age to show, I would say. So and we are we are, we are modernizing this. So here's my next bullet list. <laughs> I'm sorry for just putting putting lots of items on there, but but I I just kind of talk you a little bit through what's 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 coming at this point. So for the door is uh, is out, and um, we are an open source project. So this is nothing is cast in stone. It always depends on people actually doing the work. It, it, it depends on people coming up with ideas and, and um, also guiding us what, what makes sense. Um, so that said, we have actually a bunch of stuff that, that is already in flight at this point. And, and maybe the, the, the most um, immediate is um, that we're gearing up for a first release of, of, of uh, Spicy. Um, I'm, I'm sure many of you have heard about that one way or the other. It's our new parser generator. So it will make it much easier to add new file and protocol parsers to Zeek, um, essentially by providing its own scripting language to do so. Um, so far we had, uh, we have binpack in there, which is, is um, kind of a yuck for, for protocols. So, so you, it's, it's, it's very low level. You still need to write C++ to add a new uh, protocol parser or analyzer, as, as we like to call them, um, to, to, to Zeek. Um, Spicy comes with its own language and it in the end compiles still down to C++, but you don't, as, as the person writing that analyzer, you're not exposed to that anymore. It has been out in a kind of a, a better phase, release candidate phase for a while now. We are just kind of um, updating the installation process a bit more and um, there should be a, actually a stable release of this pretty soon. And um, as part of that, we're also actually starting to, or I have started to work on new analyzers. So there will also be a, um, a spicy analyzers package that you can st install with CKG to add new analyzers to your Zeek installation. Um, we have just started work on a new telemetry framework, which uh, comes out of the observation that it's really hard to understand the performance of what Zeek is doing in the sense of how is the cluster operating? Um, how many messages are going across? But also even uh, at the Zeek script level, um, measuring stuff across all these workers in a distributed fashion um, is, is um, something that, that we haven't provided support for so far. Um, but what we will be doing here um, is having a script level API that essentially can record observations um, that will eventually on the other end come out um, uh, through Prometheus um, using infrastructure that's already built into CAF, the underlying uh, communication library that, that actually is sitting under underneath Broker. So we'll be using some existing pieces here to get telemetry um, out through Prometheus and then into, I don't know, Grafana. So you can you can um, start, start monitoring operation of Seek, but also um, 
analysis of Zeek in the future much more nicely. This is actually triggered by um, a clear need for more automated performance regression testing. And that is what I was um, alluding to already with our release candidates. So, so we had for, for 4.0, we um, had um, in the, particularly in the second release candidate, a clear performance regression. And then it um, took us a little bit to, uh, actually to catch that because we didn't have many people running it live and it would only show up in, 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 in very demanding environments. So we are, we are working to, um, um, yeah, maybe I should add the funny thing there was that in the lab, once we knew that there was a problem, we could reduce, we could reduce, we could reproduce it in the lab. Um, so, and with that observation, um, clearly says that we should have infrastructure in place to catch this stuff earlier. So we're working on that. And and the telemetry framework is is in some sense coming actually out of that need for better performance monitoring. Um, there's work on a script compiler. That's actually a project that Vern took on. Um, coming back to working on Zeek. Um, so, and um, this is in the performance space, first of all. Um, the idea is that that uh, right now the scripting language is still completely interpreted in the sense there's um, like an abstract syntax tree inside the interpreter and we walked that, which for those who are not familiar with uh, language implementation is essentially a slow thing to do. Um, so Vern is compiling this, um, the scripts down into uh, an abstract machine that can execute um, much, much faster, faster, which can be pre-compiled. Um, and in, a, in, a, in an extension, probably also in the end can be compiled down to C++ even, so that you can, for example, take your base scripts and just kind of hard code them into Zeek um, and get the performance out of that, um, that you would otherwise not get if it were still interpreted. So it's, it's, a bit, it's going to be experimental at first, but this is, this is pretty cool um, uh, in the performance space. I was talking about the packet analyzers earlier, and this is, uh, as I already said, it's kind of a piece of moving away from just being able to analyze IP-based protocols. So we are essentially now extending the plugin API also to the level of IP, TCP, UDP, so that that will probably stay the main kind of traffic that most people are sending into Zeek, but it doesn't need to be the only traffic anymore. And the, the challenge there is that really, um, first, I mean, first, there's a lot of stuff hard coded right now in the code base. Um, but second, there is um, also just a number of, uh, I would say, assumptions about that. For example, a, a session or a connection is a five tuple of, of IP addresses, IP ports, and IP protocol. So in this, once you don't have IP anymore, you don't have that either anymore. So we need to kind of generalize the notion of a session, for example, including the state management of a session. And this is this is work that is just kicking off. And we're looking forward to that. Um, we have on the communication side, we have already a PR open in the broker repository that adds global a global publish subscribe mechanism to our communication in the sense of so right now essentially if if you want to talk to another broker node so think about the cluster like um, the, the the workers talk to each other the workers talk to the manager to the logger right now we need um point-to-point -point connections between those endpoints of a broker session in the in the future we can actually uh, create we will be able to create larger topologies where messages get routed across the whole topology. That means if if you have, a, say, a tree of, of broker nodes, which could be a large cluster monitoring, like, for example, physically distributed locations, um, the, 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 the communication there will take care of if, if, if somebody publishes something in, inside at, at one of the leaves, for example, of that tree, um, but, but other nodes and other parts of the tree are subscribed to the corresponding topic that they will actually see what's been published there. So it's essentially a peer-to-peer -peer routing layer that we're adding there, uh, tailored to our situation. So, so it's not, uh, we can make some assumptions about the size of these networks, which, which simplify that. Um, so this is, this is uh, about to be ready to be merged and, and we need some testing um, at that point. Um, moving to a little bit outside of Zeek itself, work that is also just starting is, we would like to make it easier to get started with new Zeek packages. So I started with new writing a new Zeek plugin. And we have a little bit of support right now for, for plugins. There's like this, this um, somewhat hidden script in the distribution that, that can provide you a skeleton for a new C++ plugin um, that has proven to 
worked pretty well in the sense that it's helpful, of course, to get the starting point, but it's it's hidden and it's not ex it's it's not generalized to other types of content. For example, for a package, we don't have that. Um, so what we are we are thinking is to actually build it into ZKG itself to give you um, um, the option to create a skeleton for various types of content for you, and and um, that will be centrally maintained. For example, what is a like a standard package structure, or maybe with some options. So if you want CI for your package, you just say, okay, I want a package template that includes uh, GitHub Action support, uh, um, that has support if you want to add a plugin that that comes with the C++ code for that. So it will be um, a nice way to really put something in place quickly for you to get started writing new Zeek packages and Zeek plugins. Um, once we have that, we actually hope that, this is, the, by the way, a theme that, that or like I would say a, a vision that we have been, that we had for a while, but it's hard to move there without actually having some standard mechanisms in place for writing packages. We would like to move more of the standard scripts that we currently ship with Zeek into packages. Um, not necessarily the, the stuff in base, not, not the stuff that is always loaded, but we have this, this policy directory, which has this optional functionality, which really, there's really no reason for that to have that in the distribution. It would be much nicer to have that separate, um, uh, separately out there so that uh, people can install it as needed, so that they that can be upgraded as needed, independent of Zeek releases, and um, for example, also maintained independent by other people, and and become much more flexible that way, in terms of what is like a default set of scripts. So that is, I think, coming next will probably take a little bit because it's 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 kind of tricky to to get that right and and to understand what what makes sense to ship and what what should be extra. Um, speaking about a specific um a script level framework that that we are um hoping to upstream is 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 a unit testing framework called ztest uh, developed by 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 Corelight that um adds well, essentially a unit layer a, a, a unit um a unit testing api to the script layer um so that for stuff that is really best expressed at at that level of like like assertions about the code, for example, or just basic checks um, that don't need the full end-to-end -end system and 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 scheme that B tests use, which always like I don't know if for those not familiar with that B test is our standard way of essentially running Zeek and checking the output of Zeek against a known baseline to understand if it's still behaving correctly. It's pretty heavy weight. Um, and, and complex to, to use in setup, uh, pretty effective at the same time, but not necessarily the best abstraction. So ZTest is a, is a unit testing framework um, that will supplement this. And um, I hope we can upstream this. Oh, yeah, I, I think we can, we just need to kind of um, decide on the, the right strategy for getting it into the distribution. Um, we have a recent uh, effort um, by, by, by Seth Hall actually, that um, aims at compiling what's currently, so, so maybe I need to kind of give a bit of context. So right now, if you write a C++ plugin for Zeek, that is what that, you, what, what that turns into is actually a shared library on disk. So and then you have the shared library on disk and you point Zeek to that shared library and will load it at startup and you get the functionality of that, of that um, plugin. That, um, can be inconvenient in particular for distributing Zeek. So if you if you want want to give somebody Zeek and you want to give somebody your plugins, basically it's independent pieces that then everything needs to fit together. Um, we are working here on on mostly I would say CMake magic to uh, actually take plugins as they are without much uh, or any uh, changes and and compile them statically into Zeek. So you can say okay, I want the, the following five plugins I always want. So as I'm compiling Zeek, I'm just compiling them in. So if you, I don't know, I always want the NetMap uh, plugin for, for, for getting to your packets, that's what you would compile in. Um, and finally, and this is my last, my last theme here, um, and this goes back to the first generation supervisor framework. So, so where we are really aiming to go with that uh, supervisor framework and this I said this this flipping around of, of how Zeek is deployed. Maybe we really want to go is 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 come to a replacement for Z control. So Z control is um already said it's monitoring stuff, uh doing process supervision through cron, which is not great. Uh it has a bunch of other stuff which is really not like um it's it's from a different 
era, I would say. So it's not how you run these things these days. Um, so so we want to make it more standard how you run a Z cluster. And, and that, uh, in the end, almost by definition means to, to redo and rethink how we are currently doing it. And, and, and the current plan here is to um, put Zeek itself in charge, uh, as, as I said earlier. So essentially, there will be a Zeek process in charge of managing a cluster. And there will be an API to that Zeek process that you can interact with. Um, including again from a command line. So we are, in some sense, we are, we are trying to hope to, to keep like the, the, the model of use that Z control provides because people seem to be generally pretty happy with that, with, with the cluster start, cluster stop command from the command line. Um, so we wanna keep that, but extend it um, so that, that this API also um, can accommodate other use cases, in particular if, if, um, if more and more people are running Zeek in containers, right, and, and, and cloud environments. So we need to make sure that that whatever we build kind of fits into these deploy, deployment models as well. And this is um, a project that's uh, just starting. There's a pretty detailed design actually uh, out there. Uh, there's a ticket tracking this with, with links. Um, definitely interested in feedback if anybody uh, is, is, is interested in, in, in digging in a little bit and, and providing thoughts and ideas. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of a list of stuff, I would say. And this is, uh, all of this is one way or the other already in the works. So that doesn't mean it will be in 4.1. Uh, some of this will be. Uh, for some of this, um, there will be, I think, some pieces, some initial pieces in 4.1. Um, we'll see, but, but um, a lot of this, I think, for five uh, should be in place. So let me um, back off a little bit and and and, and talk about um, how you, if you're interested in actually more of an of getting of gaining more insight into the development process. Basically, how we how does this this work that I was just sketching out? How does it happen? Um, we we have. I believe pretty good these days in, in, in really doing pretty much all of the major discussions out in the open on GitHub. Um, so you can go to the Zeek repository, which is kind of the hub for, for most of the stuff and look at the GitHub issues, uh, look at the PRs. Um, and uh, pretty recently uh, we added the, the GitHub discussions um, uh, tab as well. So we can actually have discussions on GitHub as well. Um, there are other repositories where some of the action uh, takes place as well, like the broker repository, the package manager, and our spicy. Um, they basically have their, their independent uh, issue tracker and PR. Um, and on many of them, you can filter for milestones. So we have, we don't have a, we, we used to have like a wiki page which listed a roadmap, which was in some sense very similar to my previous slides, basically just listing stuff that that were in the works. But because um, as with many open source projects, this is this is just fluid. What is the current set of stuff that people that somebody is working on? Um, we, we we switch to actually just using uh, milestones in GitHub for. The most concrete roadmap items. So, so you, if you can, at any point of time, you can pretty well see what is targeted for 4.1, for example. We don't usually plan it out much further there, but what is coming in the next release, um, GitHub gives you a good idea. Um, there's a wiki on GitHub as well that is in the Zeek repository, um, which has a bunch of developer information, um, like this release cadence that my first talk was about, uh, my first slide was about. Um, the platform support policy, a contribution guide, you find this in the wiki there. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in that kind of stuff, um, take a look there. We have on Slack, the development channel in particular for, for kind of those low level questions and, 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 and upcoming work. We also have a development mailing list, um, um, similar, similar um, space. So um, join there, follow, and feel free to, to speak up as well. And this is really um, kind of my, my final piece that I want to convey. Um, this is open, it's an open source project. So it, 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 it lives by the people who provide uh, content, but also feedback uh, on, on, on other people's content. So, so um, if, if you're interested in, in, in moving Zeek forward, um, there are a bun there's a bunch of stuff you can do. I mean, one is actually just feedback and, 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 and just in quotation marks because it's super helpful. So if you, if you notice something, you know, some quirk, some bug, 
um, something you want to change, um, file tickets. I mean, that's that's what it's for, and and somebody will be on it and 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 and, and comment. And the same way, you can comment on existing tickets, PRs uh, for larger features. We often do proposals, like what I was saying for the um, for the new management framework, um, and uh, the more feedback from the community we're getting on, on any of this, the better, because otherwise we, we, we can't know if they're actually putting the right things. So if, if, if something sparks your interest, I mean, don't be shy, uh, go in there and, and uh, comment. And, and on this new discussion, uh, tab and GitHub, actually, it's, it's also a great place just if you want to brainstorm. If you have an idea, not quite baked yet, maybe, and, and, and could be a feature eventually, I mean, just start a discussion, people will chime in. If you were going to go hands on and actually contribute, um, I already said the, the GitHub Wiki has a contribution guide. Um, you can also, if, if you're not quite sure yet what to even work on, go to the uh, issue tracker and, and, and look at tickets and see if something sparks your interest. Um, we have some marked as, as, as good first issue in, in uh, GitHub's tradition. So, so that, that are usually like, like pretty narrowly scoped um, things, which are for a newcomer not always necessarily easy. I don't want to say that, but, but at least it doesn't require you to understand everything at once. So, so it's a good starting point. You can also just ask. So if there's something like a specific area you would be interested in and, and you don't find a ticket or don't have an idea for um, what to do there, um, just ask on one of the development channels and, and, and we'll help. Um, if you have actually code ready, file a PR. That's really our process. Um, standard GitHub PRs. Um, for, for small stuff, just go ahead and, and file that PR and, and we will review and provide feedback and, and merge. Um, for larger um, projects, it's actually best if <laughs> before you file that PR, even before you start the work, um, you sync up and, and, and maybe uh, deal with a little like, like a design, with a proposal or a little design document or something and um, have us all iterate over what's, what's happening there because that way um, experience shows that eventually the, the final PR and the merge will be pretty straightforward because everybody's on the same page already. There's actually something we are doing ourselves as well, like on the core team, um, new projects often come with um, either these, these kinds of proposals or design documents, like for, again, for the, for the management framework, um, for the supervisor, um, or at least with, with um, pretty extensive discussions in, 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 in tickets that, that are tracking um, the work. So again, and, and for, for larger pieces, just get in touch early and, and um, we'll be happy to help. If you're not a coder, um, you can still help. And um, there's, there's, there, there are various ways to do that. And, and um, there's, this is my pitch for, for testing. So, so if, if you're running Zeek in a live environment and you have a little bit of um, spare capacity, maybe you have a, like a separate system where you can just test something like, like a new Zeek build, um, we are hoping to assemble a small team of those kinds of sites that um, as we have new versions of Zeek, we can go to and, and ask them to just run that for a week. Um, and, and the idea is that um, often people who have the operational experience in their environment can pretty much pretty quickly tell just by looking at, I don't know, CPU, memory usage of Zeek, kind of log volume, the types of logs, um, if there's something off. In particular, for, and on the performance um, side, uh, it, it's, it's the moment you feed it live traffic, it's, it often becomes pretty pretty clear um, if, it's, if it's going well or not. Um, the more kind of environments like that we can draw on, um, the more stable our releases will be. And, and we used to have a few in the past, our, our set has become pretty small at this point, honestly, which was one of the reasons for the delay in, in, in the 4.0 release. So if, if you think you have um, a bit of uh, spare cycles there um, to occasionally, and this is not all the time, but to occasionally help with this, and I would say it's, uh, it's release candidates for new releases, it's probably um, um, like, like Again, occasionally, um, I don't know if we merge a major feature into into the master branch. For example, if this new routing layer for uh, broker goes in, at that point, it would actually be good to um, have a cross check across different traffic loads to see if this performs as usual. So um, let us know. I mean, you can reach out to me directly if you want. Otherwise, generally, um, again, the development channel on on, on Slack. Um, also, our Catch all email address info at zeek.org is, is the one if, if you don't want to go um, completely public, um, mail it there. We will we'll, um, fan out from there. Or again, just contact me directly as well. Um, this 
pretty much applies to the documentation team as well. So with this new, the book of Seek, um, the, the effort Richard is leading, um, we have started to build an, a documentation team that will make sure that our, the Seek documentation uh, first remains up to date in the future as as the, 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 the system changes, as new features get added, but also that it get, gets extended further. I mean, you can never have enough documentation. So if, if you're interested in, in helping uh, working on the Seek documentation, same applies. Um, there's actually a dedicated channel on on that on Zeek documentation. Um, make yourself known there, and and um, folks will be happy to to um, get you in. Um, generally, of course, you can always help other users as well. Um, that is uh, <laughs> probably the catch all, and it's really actually working pretty well at this point. I think it's 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 a very nice development. I think over the recent couple of years, I would say that if you um, go to Slack, for example, which is well, it's new, so it's hard to compare. <laughs> But it's 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 working pretty well. That I think the community is is has become really interactive and and helpful. So if that somebody has an issue, has a problem, has a challenge, has a question, um, there's usually somebody who knows the answer, or at least can kind of point people the right way. And um, this is really nice to see. Um, yeah, that actually is my last slide here. Um, and I think we have coming towards the end, but you have a few minutes for questions if there is any. So I, there was a bit of a like total force across all kinds of stuff. So um, feel free to put questions into the chat if there is any. Uh, Robin, you've got two questions uh, there. The first one uh, is what's, oh, yeah. what, I don't know if you could see them. Can you see the question? I don't see it. Yeah, it was kind of scrolled away. Um, so when the first question is when will the version 4.0.0 become official 4.0.0 LTS? Uh, I would say it is already. So essentially the the, the 4.0 release that is currently out is the new LTS release. So in, in 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 that sense, right now we are at the phase of the year where we don't have a separate feature release. So we have basically 4.0 is both the current feature release and the current LTS release. So that means we will be we will from now on keep patching 4.0. So the next patch release for 4.0 will be 4.0.1 and 2.2.3. So this this release is out. Um, the next question is what's the what's next will be in version five LTS. Um, so let me go back to that slide real quick. So I would, uh, if you force me to give an answer, I would say yes, <laughs> but it's, it won't be all of this. Some of this will change. Um, but generally what I'm talking about is my, my I'm, I'm anticipating to have most of this in, in, in the 4.0, sorry, in the 5.0 LTS release. So that's, that's a year out at this point. Um, and, and it will, the idea is that it will kind of phase in over the feature releases in between. Um, I see another one. Could we have the document on how to upgrade? Oh, could, could be. Okay, so I'm, I think you're asking for uh, upgrade instructions. So the best place for that to start is actually the news file. Um, so the, the, the news file in the distribution is, is collecting um, in a pretty detailed fashion, the main things that are new, but also that have changed and, and things that got deprecated. So that is, um, I think the best we can offer at this point. Um, it's hard to go beyond that. So, so we'll be doing a, a couple pieces on individual stuff. So for example, I, I already mentioned there will be a blog, blog posting coming up for ZKG. So with that now being, part of the distribution, um, what does that mean? And and how do you upgrade your ZKG installation? Um, it's, 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 we, we are thinking about providing documentation for how to upgrade a plugin. So what are the C++ changes, the smart pointer stuff, the namespacing that, that you need to address? Um, it's, it's, if, if there are more specific topics, I would say, feel free to, to let us know so we can certainly put something together. Um, otherwise I would point to the news file as the, as the main part. Um, Will the Zeek license change in the future? I can uh, give a very uh, certain no uh, to that. So there's no plan at all to, for the license to change. We, will, we are BSD, we will stay BSD. And maybe I should add, all the new stuff is being added as BSD as well. So if you, if you look at Spicy, it's, it's BSD licensed. Um, that is our license, nothing will change. All right. More questions, a couple more minutes.
All right, I guess we're good. Oh, you've got one more. Ah. Do we have a plan to implement hardware acceleration to increase the performance? Um, I would say not inside Zeek proper. So you can already use, um, you can add new packet sources as plugins. Um, and, and people are already doing that for the various APIs out there, including some, some hardware accelerated. Um, what's, what's tricky about that, getting that into, into Zeek itself is, 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 is uh, turn, turn, let me turn it around. It's, it's tricky to get that into Zeek itself because it's always so specific to, to some hardware. So, so that is this hard to maintain. It's hard to test for us. Um, which is why actually one of there was is one of the main reasons that originally we introduced the, the plugin API at that at that level that that people can focus on this more externally. So and I, I believe we will probably stay with that route. Um, that said, maybe I can add this. Um, if there are things that we can add to that plugin API to better facilitate accelerated hardware. Um, that is definitely in scope. So uh, I was interested in, in ideas for what kind of APIs should we expose to uh, external components, plugins, um, and this applies across the whole stack essentially inside Zeek. Um, what APIs are missing currently to really exploit the system you are on? Yeah, early in PST. That's correct. So I am actually. So I used to be on PST. Um, I'm now on CET. I'm, I'm based in Munich now. So it's it's a more convenient time for me. And this, we will. I think we will be doing a similar one here for the for the US audience as well. Uh, yes, in two weeks. Yeah. Well, you'll be you'll be doing this again for everybody in two weeks. It's actually pretty exciting to see that we can do these events now for um, other time zones as well, in particular, in this case, for the European audience. Um, Robin, also for those on this call, if you have ideas or would like to see webinars, uh, you know, if there's a specific topic you'd like to see a webinar on, please let us know that as well so we can find the right instructors and get that queued up uh, for your learning pleasure. All right, All that's right. a chance. I think we're good. Robin, thank you so much for joining us today and presenting on 4.0. Again, uh, as you mentioned, you'll be doing this again in two weeks. So if there was something um, that you missed or, or that you would have liked to have, have presented, you'll wrap that into the next one. If there's something uh, that anybody else would like to see, it'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern in, in two weeks. Um, and yes, we will make uh, the video available uh, just like we have with the other ones. So, so uh, look either on Slack, on Twitter, on the mailing list. Uh, we, we put it out in all those locations. And you should also be able to go back and replay uh, using your registration. If you can't, uh, like I said, there'll be many other places where you'll be able to see the video uh, later. So again, thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you again, Robin. Thanks, Amber. And thanks, everybody, for joining. And if you don't mind clicking off air, Robin, that would be great.